We get a lot of questions about HVAC systems, especially related to airflow and static pressure. When I first started, I had a textbook and that textbook basically gave me some graphs. But there's no better way to understand it than to look at a live demonstration. So that's what we have here. This is representative of your air handler or furnace. This might be in the basement. This might be in the attic. And you have a filter that's connected to it on the return side. You have your return duct. Here's your return grill. So it's going to pull air in here through the return ducting, through the filter, through the blower. And it's going to go through the supply and then go out to the two different registers there. What we can do is we can use a manometer like this and a static pressure probe like this to measure the static pressure in the systems at various points. We call that pressure mapping. It's analogous to measuring blood pressure in the human body. We wanna make sure the blood pressure, in this case, the static pressure is not too high. Because if it's too high, that's gonna impose too much resistance on the motor, bad things would happen. So let me turn the unit on. I'm gonna put the filter cover on. So now we're pulling air, I can use smoke. Smoke is a great visual representation, right? So there's the air going into the system, going through the unit, coming out through the supplies. Now we can map that static pressure like I talked about. So I take the static pressure probe, and what I'm always doing is I'm pointing the probe in the direction of airflow. So the air is going in this direction, so the probe points at the airstream in the airflow direction. So it's about zero, as it should be. And we can then measure it at different points. So I can measure here after the filter, closest to the air handler, is about minus 0.6. That is really high, just on the return side. On the supply side, we're gonna do the same thing on the supply side. It's right around 0.2. So we got about 0.2 coming out on the supply side. And then what I can do is I can map the pressure along the supply ducting. So again, I'm gonna measure the pressure here. I'm gonna point the probe in the airstream. I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna write around 0.1, okay? I do the same thing here. I can see that I'm very low, 0.03 and you can go all the way out to the boot and you can see that we are close to zero. We're at 0.006, it's really low. And then we can look at it actually at the end at the register, it's 0.001, so very, very low. So what's happening is the blower creates that pressure difference to force air through the supply ducting and push it all the way through. And by measuring static pressure, you can figure out where your weak points are in the system, how the system is performing. And if I go back to here and I measure the static pressure in my air handler, I'm gonna set one up automatically to run it all the time so we can see how the performance is. So I'll put one on the return side and the same thing on the supply side. The static pressure probe goes in, pointing down. And I'm measuring total external static pressure. So total external static pressure is the air handler's pressure that's imposed across the blower motor typically want to be about 0.5 or less. So we're about one right now. So that's a problem. But then we can try to figure out where that problem is, right? So I can look at the filter, right? I can measure the filter before and after. And so you can see that out of that one inch, about minus 0.2 is from the return duct. So I know that that grill in this return duct is probably pretty good. And if I pop this out and measure just the return side, we can see that that is minus 0.6. So that filter between here at 0.2 and here at 0.6, this is 0.4 inches of water column just through that filter. So I can tell right off the get-go, this filter is my problematic area in this system, okay? The next thing we have to figure out is airflow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a device like this called a flow hood. And what I can do is I can put it over a register like this and I can take a measurement. It's gonna measure the cubic feet per minute. It's gonna measure the CFM. So how much air is actually getting pulled in through this register? It's gonna calculate that right here. 160 CFM. So I got 160 CFM going in through that system. Let's say I don't have the ability to use a flow hood. That's okay. I can use an anemometer. So this is a four inch uh, anemometer. It measures um, speed of airflow, okay? So if I take that and I put it over the opening, I'm going to see the feet per minute and I've already entered in the air opening that's called the AK factor. 
I can see I'm about 100 CFM through this one, and I am about 60 CFM through this one. So I got 100 CFM going out this way, 60 CFM coming out this way. Let's just say I run my load calc and I figure out that this room actually needs less airflow. It doesn't need 100, it needs less. So what I can do is I can use balancing dampers to adjust the balancing of this system. And once I like the position of it in terms of the right amount of airflow, I can lock it down with those two set screws so it doesn't move, it will be locked in place. And what I'm effectively doing is I'm changing the opening. So if I wanna target the right amount of airflow to a room, I use balancing dampers or volume dampers like this, and this iris style, lens style, is the best one to get the targeted airflow through that system, and I can measure the static pressure to get my airflow proper. Now the other thing that's worth mentioning here is if I have too much resistance, meaning let's say my flex duct is pinched, not only will my airflow be reduced, which I can measure and I can quantify that to see it, my static pressure is gonna go up. But now what happens when the flex duct gets pinched? That flex duct gets pinched like this, look what happens, the static pressure went up. It was 0 0.08, now it's 0.11 or 0.12. So the static pressure goes up. Now if I remeasure the airflow, it's about 90. So we just lost over 10 CFM of air by increasing the static pressure in our system. The other thing that a lot of people do is they use these dampers at the register. And as you can see, as we throttle that damper closed, you're gonna see exactly what you would expect. The static pressure is going to rise. And we're also gonna see a reduction in airflow. We're now moving about 60 CFM from this register. So we were at 100 before, now we're at 60. So this is a great way to understand airflow, static pressure, the health of your system. Are you moving enough air to your system or not? This is gonna be room by room dependent, right? So you're moving the right amount of air, the right amount of CFM, per what the load calc tells you that you need. And so this is just a great way to demonstrate static pressure and airflow in a duct system and how that really matters. So we're gonna be putting out educational content like this. So tune in, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. Thanks for watching.